Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the inspection on posture and movement. Let's see this video first as I cannot replay, I cannot replay this video during the recording. So from the inspection of the posture and movements, we not only can tell the patient's yin and yang pathogens or body constitutions, but also we can tell from some typical posture and movements, we can tell what kinds of problem the patient is suffering. For instance, yang dominates active, yin dominates static. So a patient presents a, a patient with yang body constitution or they suffer from heat or excess pathogens, they more likely to present with active movements such as irritation. And a lot of movements we are going to talk about in, in the later slides. A in body constitution patient suffer from coldness or deficiency, the patient more likely to present with fatigue and reluctant to move. So these are the general condition of the movements. If you see someone that don't want to move, no you be you can you can just in general you can think about that the patient may have qi deficiency. Also from the posture, such as the first page, the from the first picture, you see this gentleman. If you see someone working like this, you you will you can imply that this person is more likely to have cervical problem and also low back problem. So that's from the posture. The first one we're going to talk about the sitting posture. A sitting posture, as you can see from this this image, the patient is sitting and pointing. You can see from the the image that the patient have the difficult difficult breathing problem, and this kind of patient reluctant to talk indicates a qi deficiency. But what kinds of qi deficiency? In which organs you can combine with the the other symptoms such as it did describe here the coughing, panting, there's something related to the lung. So that's, that's the lung qi deficiency. If a patient preferred to lie in prone, in prone position, this can indicate that the patient got a weaker body constitution with the qi deficiency. For, for the other indications, you can just go through them and try to remember. The, the more the better. The next one, the lying posture. The lying posture, such these three images, the first one and then the second and the third one, they lying facing the wall or facing the corner. That's, that's what they describe here, facing outside or facing inside. Facing inside. That's a different situation. It's someone that prefer to lie in face, facing the wall or facing the corner. It can present with in condition. And in condition, then it can be the in syndrome the coldness syndrome and also deficiency. If a patient lying facing outside, the this one is more active, can indicate the heat or excess syndrome or yang syndrome. So that's how we can we can observe the lying posture. And also if a patient lying and stretching their extremities, then that can indicate this is a young person. If it's a patient lying and crawling like this, 
this can present this person as an inconstitution or suffer from impassage, such as coldness. If a patient presents with panting, coughing, especially when while lying, so this can indicate the, the lung qi stagnation. Also can indicate that this this stagnation affects the, the heart yang or water retention in the heart. The standing posture, the first from these standing posture, we begin to mention quite a, quite a few of posture and movements. The first one, unstable standing. Unstable standing, unstable, in other words, is moving. Right, so stable is static. You can, you can stand still, but unstable, which means you cannot stand still. If you cannot stand still, means you're going to stand and move. So that's why it is, is described as a sieve, why it's jump. So in this situation, especially the patient presents with vertigo, often indicates internal stir, internal stir of level wind. Why we mention the wind here? That's because of the movement. The wind from the basic theories, which what kinds of characteristics the wind is. The wind dominates the move the moving. So anything or any symptoms, any signs present as moving, we're going to think about the wind. Although from the internal evils, the five internal evils, the first one we mentioned the internal wind. We got different causes of the wind, but no matter what kind of causes, the result is the, the wind. So when we see the the moving posture, the, mo the movements, you're going to think about the wind, and then from the wind, you're going to think about what's the cause behind this wind. The next one we're going to talk about is the walking posture. Don't be confused by the video here. The description and the video is not related. Firstly, we're going to talk about the description suddenly stopping during walking to protect the hot air with the hands often indicates the angina pateris. So this is the situation. The patient is walking what the patient was walking, but all of a sudden they stop and using their hand to press their hot air. So this can indicate the heart attack in common words, or using the hands to protect the low back area, or to protect some other areas, this can ind indicate that the specific areas may suffer from pain. Okay, and uh, the trembling during walking indicates internal wind or of liver of liver wind. So trembling, trembling is the movement. Whenever we talk about the moving movement, we, th we think about the, the wind. So you're going to focus on the wind and then you go back to the five internal evils. You're going to think, you're going to analyze which cause. And from the video here, the one you probably you already focused on the video, if someone presents with this kinds of movements, this kinds of walking movements, walking postures, you can see that the patient is the, the patient suffers from Parkinson. So that's very typical movements of Parkinson diseases. The posture during pain. When you see someone sitting or use their hand to holding somewhere this posture can indicate there's a certain area 
we suffer from the pain. So that's from the inspection. It's, as you can see, some of these symptoms, some of these indications, we already knew in our daily life, but we just don't realize that we're using the inspection in our daily life. From here, we only give you some examples. We, you actually can see more other examples in your daily life. But normal body movements, tremor of the hands and feet. So here we're going to give you some images there, that's trembling. And because of this problem is moving, so when you see a patient present with this, it can be trembling, it can be Parkinson's disease. The Parkinson's disease is also one of a trembling. So in, in the three months, we're going to focus on the wind. So we, it can be the hyperactive liver wind or the, the, the internal wind due to indeficiency or blood deficiency. That's something we're going to analyze when we talk about the therapeutics we're going to discuss more and as well as the central differentiations how to differentiate these kinds of movements but from here from the diagnostics especially for inspection what we need to do is what you need to remember is the the term, the image and the description when you see this kind of a person presents with this kind of symptoms or the signs. This can be either symptoms or both symptoms or signs because the sound thing that the patient can feel also something you can see. So when you see a patient present with this, in this kinds of symptoms, you need to understand or you need to think about what's the cause. The first thing you need to think about is the wind, right? Because the movements the movement is related to the wind, and then you're going to think about what's the cause. So that's the trembling. Convulsion, convulsion of limbs. This one is fake, but he he act he acts very quite well. So that's why I put the image here. Convulsion since in epilepsy or children with high grade fever of the extremities. This is also a kind of movement. You see the, the body is shaking. Shaking is movement. So that's why it says generating wind. Wind. See? So here, we only give you two options. Extremely heat or level wind. Sometimes in clinics, you can see other causes. That's possible. So when you see these moments, you need to think about the wind and also you need to when you see this kinds of moments it will you should reflect in your mind that convulsion directly. Of its shortness, of its is a state of severe hyper extension and specificities. So that's the in the, especially the specificity in the head, neck, and spinal cord. So that's what you see in the clinic. The patient presents as a bridge or arching. So because of the the situation is the sparrow spasticities, sparing of the muscles and ligaments. So what make the, the baby into this, this position? That's the sparing of the muscles and ligaments. So what's related to the ligaments? That's the liver. So for this kind of problem, what we, how we think about is the liver wind as well. So that's the, the movement. 
Morphology and fluorescence. These two terms might be new to you, and also it's a bit weird because this phenomenon is not easy to see or not common to see. Often seen, often seen in delirious or semi-conscious patient. The patient presents as the actions of picking off flocks or wolf or grabbing at the imagine, imaginary objects as well as the patient's old clothes or best dinner. So which means this patient is actually unconsciousness. The patient does not know what they were doing, but from the the symptoms, the signs we can see that the patient, their hands, their feet is moving. It's, it looks like that the patient is picking out something or touching something. That's why we, we describe it as grabbing at the Im imaginary objects. This is a critical sign of extreme erosion of So if a patient presents with this situation, is very severe, approaching death. Richard movement. You can see from the the video first. Move very slow. So these two images, these two short videos, are uh, patient with. Uh, okay, here you, we can. No, I still can't re replay. So from these two videos, these two videos, these two patients were actually suffered from stroke. After stroke, their their movement become like this. So how do we understand this kind of movement? Firstly, it move very slow. It can be the deficiency. But this kind of slow movement is not due to pain. So that's very important. When you see someone, they move the movements are very slow. You need to think about what's the cause. Does the patient feel pain so that they move slower in order to reduce the pain? or impair the movement without pain. So that's very important. If without pain is deficiency, it can be either qi deficiency or blood deficiency. It depends on the other symptoms, the other symptoms and signs. So the contributing factors include damp heat in yang Li meridian. Qi deficiency of spring. Why qi deficiency of the spring? That's because the movements work control the movements. That's the muscle. The construction of the muscle is, is the the core the, the the reason of the movements. So that's the spring and stomach. Individual individuals with B syndrome. B syndrome, we tend to talk about in the therapeutics, it is a kind of pain, especially from the joints pain, the pain. So this is the difference from the stroke with from with the moment without pain. This one is with pain, B syndrome. It's slow movements but with joints pain. Difficult movements. So difficult movements also move very slow. The last one, the sudden faint. Sudden faint. Sudden faint can be epilepsy or can be stroke. So from different symptoms, different signs. We need to think about the cause. No matter what kind of medical condition, epilepsy or stroke, the sudden faint 
sudden faint. What can? What's the faint? That's the movement. That's the moving. Sudden moving. So sudden. What can change? Very quick in the passages. That's also the wind, the faint, also the the movement. So this also may be the the wind. What kind of wind? You need to think about the indeficiency, blood deficiency, or hyperactive yang qi movements, abdominal qi ascending and descending. So these are the com common symptoms that we can see from our daily life from our clinics and from for this this kind of symptoms you're also going to learn this kind of symptoms in the diagnostics of the general medicine as how you understand these kinds of symptoms from our theories that's important the sound stroke present with certain fans as well red face sweating because certain fans is unconsciousness so someone faint they don't realize they they were fainting so consciousness what controls the consciousness consciousness that's the heart so the Sudden faint must relate to the heart. The pathogen must affect the heart. That will cause the faint. A patient present with stroke will have sudden faint as well. Stroke, hemiplegia, deviation of the mouth and eyes, slurred of speech. Liver wind, so that's the cause of a stroke. How we how we understand a stroke? That's the liver wind. The reason why it's liver wind is because sudden fans the movements, hemiplegias, the abnormal movements, deviation of the mouth and eyes, deviation also the movements. So the moving situation. The moving situation is the wind, so stroke. Stroke in in Chinese in Mandarin we also called attack by the wind. Directly we call it attack by the wind. So if the patient presents with a certain fence, especially with unconsciousness, this the pathogens have already affect the mind. So these are the common symptoms that we're going to talk about. One last thing that's from the Chamberlain. We from the Chamberlain we only mentioned that's the Chamberlain in the fingers. That's what which the, the video we show you. But the Chamberlain is not only in the in the fingers. It can be in any part of the body, such as the muscles. Or that's the present as spar as sparum. So sparum, we will think about the it's a, a kind of a trampoline. The cause of sparum. We also think about the wind, and then um, what's the potential causes of the internal wind. That's something we're going to study. In, we're going to study in the in the differentiation. Until here, we have introduced the facial the in inspection on facial complexion, the colors, the posture, and the movements. These four aspects are actually the gen the four aspects of the general condition, the inspection of general condition. From from these four aspects, you will see that we actually did not talk about one single disease. From this inspection, we actually have more general idea of the patient's condition. So if we see a patient, we have a general condition. We want to get a general attitude or general images 
in our minds what's the patient condition. That's the observation from these four aspects. And then the observation from the local condition, that's the from specific diseases, mostly from specific diseases. So we're going to stop here. Thank you guys.